What's up guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And this one I want to break down what's happening with SPY, Tesla, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down why tomorrow is going to be another important day, as it's going to be Friday and there's lots of options expiring, but you should be watching for on the charts moving forward. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Weeble link. If you deposit any amounts of money, you're guaranteed 12 free stocks. If you deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 in total. If you deposit $2,000 or more, you're guaranteed 40. The offer ends very soon in just seven days. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening with the markets. So, so far, SPY is doing a good job at holding up. I want to call out to the fact that yesterday we saw this dip all the way down towards this 574 area, right? But then what happened was buyers came back and they pushed us back to our 20 EMA at 580. Then we came down and made a, low, uh, a higher low compared to that low over here. So we're making a higher low. As long as this low holds tomorrow, this should attempt to rebound back up to our 20 EMA. I'm potentially going even higher than that for a potential back test. Now, it doesn't guarantee the market's officially like super bullish or anything like that. This is just an attempt to rebound temporarily. So it all depends on if we can get that bounce if we hold the low of the day. That could give SPY some potential. Now, you could also argue that SPY is making lower highs right here, so it looks like it's getting a little bit tighter. So I anticipate that what's happening is this, where we have this little wedge-like structure that's forming where SPY is getting tighter and tighter, but simultaneously we're making higher lows, which is benefiting us. So there's going to be a very, very big move coming, and I think that SPY will continue to respect this and see a little bit of consolidation going into tomorrow. Uh, there's going to be an attempt to rebound back up to this upper area and the dip back down, just lots of consolidation, most likely. Unless we break this upper trend line, we start pushing above that. That could change things quite quickly. But look for some consolidation and we'll see what things end up doing. I do want to mention that Tesla did really well today. It was one of the biggest winners of the day, up 22%. But one thing was mentioned is the fact that we've pumped really hard, really fast. And generally when stocks do this, they do see a bit of a slowdown before they try to continue again, as there's lots of momentum that's remaining. So Tesla crushed when it comes to earnings. It did rel relatively well. It did a great job in pushing and I just wanted to say that, um, you know, the, the whole team did a great job when it comes to announcing their earnings, uh, achieving profitability with the Cybertruck, and then the Robo, uh, the, the Cybercab, excuse me, that's that's doing relatively well as well. Uh, they're going to be looking for volume production possibly in 2026. So that's very, very bullish news. So Tesla did well. Tesla was the big leader of the day. That's why the share price is up quite a bit. And even the other earnings that came out for the day were quite good from American Airlines, not to mention UPS. So Tesla led the way. It's actually at 260 a share. Uh, it pushed so much, but the question is what's going to happen here. This may dip a little bit before we see some more upsets. So I'll talk about that as well in just about a minute. But, but anyways, let's talk about some economic data just real quick, then I'll break down more details about the charts. So the first thing with mentioning for tomorrow is it's going to be Friday, October 25th, 2024. Please remember that Fridays are full of manipulation, and there's going to be some consolidation likely coming to the market because of that. Now at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, we have some data coming out that's 30 minutes after market open in the U.S. We have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report, the five-year inflationary expectations, and very, very minor data. So we'll see what this leads to. So be very patient. On top of this, uh, despite the fact that there's not really a whole lot that's coming out, there might be some volatility at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Then the market's currently at greed. Greed is making up the majority of sentiment as there's a lot of buyers stepping in. Momentum is also quite greedy as, once again, there's a lot of buyers. And then I'm also looking at our puts and call option ratios. Greed is, once again, the 0 0.7 put to call ratio. So that's telling us that right now, there's been a slight increase in puts and buying activity. So people have been buying shorts a little bit more as the market was dipping. But the question is, will this lead to a small squeeze or will the market try to hold up? I'll be waiting for this very, very carefully. Uh, when it comes to other factors out there, I also want to mention that there's the VIX. VIX is quite neutral. We're trying to hold our 50 daily moving average, and we'll see what happens with this. If it holds, we'll try to rebound, so give it some time as well. Uh, for other factors, I want to call out that for tomorrow, we have a little bit over 300,000 of these calls expiring, and we have just under about 800,000 puts expiring. We have 578 as our max pain, and 2.62 is the put-to-call ratio. So we'll see what happens with this. Will we close closer to max pin or will we get a bounce? So starting off with SPY, what do I think is going to happen to the chart? I want to focus on the charts from this point on. I think that SPY is doing a good job at holding up. But here's the thing. We're getting very, very tight right now. We're going to be watching to see which direction we end up breaking in. It is possible we attempt to bounce. And I think there might be a little bit of a push attempt that happens in the morning tomorrow. So we're going to be looking at this 20 EMA at 580.8 is our resistance. But then I think what's going to happen is we're going to be looking for some consolidation in this range. Now, 
uh, in my opinion, because we're trying to hold and base at this key support, it is possible we get a rebound later on, but we'll see if that leads to further downside. So I'm looking for a move like this tomorrow. We're going to basically push up to this resistance around 580.8. Then we might start to consolidate, get very, very tight as it's a Friday, and Fridays are oftentimes full of manipulation. And then we'll be watching to see if we get a breakout like this going into like the end of Friday, if not by early next week. If we hit this resistance and we reject, this could be a move back down. But if it's an opposite re reaction, we have to lose 575 to turn more bearish. I'll be watching that very carefully. But I'm seeing that we just see a little bit of a push tomorrow morning as the most likely case for the 580.8 area. Then we're going to be looking for some consolidation. If we break past 580.8, there could be a breakout that comes early out of this wedge. So if we break 580.8, we turn more bullish. And if we end up breaking below the low of the day today, we're going to turn more bearish. So if 576 fails us, we turn bearish. If 580.8 breaks, we turn more bullish. It's stuck in the middle for now. So look for some what of a push tomorrow morning to this resistance, then some consolidation like this. Then we'll be watching to see if we get a breakout in either direction, possibly the upside, at least just temporarily. Uh, they may not let the market dump too hard approaching the election, but who knows? Uh, that's something I just wanted to call out. I also want to mention that ES has something very similar developing. ES is also getting very tight, but I'm seeing some buyers trying to defend it. And it looks like it's going to try to push a little higher tomorrow morning. Now, hypothetically, if we end up losing 58.40, we're looking for a dip back down towards 58.25. If that fails us, we turn more bearish. If we're bullish, we want to break past 58.66. If that breaks, we're looking for a bigger pump up towards 58.80. As of right now, we're kind of stuck in the middle, but I just want to say that 58.66 looks like a potential target. The four hour looks a little bit more bullish, and I think that 58.66 is going to be a very, very probable move. And I think that ES may be pushing for that target. So watch to see if you end up getting a push back up there. Uh, tomorrow morning, look for 58.66 to be tested. Then we might consolidate after that. If we break that, however, we're looking for a bigger pump for 58.80. So we'll see which one it ends up being. But so far, the odds do favor a little bit of a push. For NVIDIA, I think that NVIDIA is doing a good job, but it's just consolidating as well. Tomorrow morning, look for a push towards this imbalance, taking us up towards 141. And a lot of choppy sideways price action as it's going to be a Friday. I anticipate that to be the most likely move. And when it comes to our levels, we're going to be looking for a move just like this, where we just consolidate for a bit. I think we might be entering a consolidation phase like this, where we, we see an initial pump back up to this upper trend line, taking us up to where this four-hour candlestick is at 141. A dip back down, just further consolidation. We'll be watching to see if we get a break or a dump. So it could go either way. But I think we're going to most likely see consolidation, look for a push back up towards the 141s, and we'll see what happens after that. So be very patient, guys, and we'll see what goes on. And that's going to be very key for the way things end up moving. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin is looking more bullish as we can have a nice breakout. As long as we don't lose $67,500 favor upside, and we could be looking for $68,800 as our next potential target. I think that's 69,000 is where Bitcoin is heading towards, and we'll see if this gets a rejection or not, so it gives us the time it needs. For a few more, uh, for those who are interested in Tesla, so what do I think Tesla's going to do? I think Tesla's going to dip a little bit. We pumped very, very well, very, very nicely over the last couple of hours, but we've hit this resistance in the 260s, and we are due for a small little dip. We could be retesting 255 before it attempts to bounce. I would say between 255 and 252 is where Tesla is going to be heading towards. So look for a small dip around uh, 255, and then we will see what happens after that. If 255 is tested, uh, I think Tesla could still rebound for 262. I think the upside is not necessarily done for Tesla, but there might be a small dip into the mid 250s, all the way down to 252 to 255 before it attempts to rebound again. So watch and see if that ends up being the case. This is where the breakout was right here. And this is going to be previous support, uh, previous resistance becoming support. So I'm going to be watching for that. For NQ, this is looking a little bit more bullish to me. So this makes me think that the odds are favoring a little bit more upside instead of just like consolidation um, for other tickers out there. So from the way I'm seeing things, I just want to say that we might see an attempt for us to um, push back up. I'll be watching to see if this ends up being the case, but just know the four hour is looking a little bit more bullish. So if we were to lose 20,300, we're looking for a dip back down towards 20,200. If we break past 20,400 is our resistance, we're looking for a push back up towards 20,500. So my gut is telling me 20,400 is going to be tested on NQ. And this might try to break for 20,500 is the most likely case, as long as we break past the resistance up here. 
Look for a test of 20,400 tomorrow. If it breaks, 20,500 is coming. That's the most likely case looking at these technicals, but we'll see if that ends up being the case or not. Tesla's obviously helping this a lot. For the QQQ, we, we had a low here, came up, made a higher low. It's trying to push, but now we're consolidating between this range. If we lose 491.59, we're looking for 490 as our potential target. If we break past 492.68, we're looking for a pump back up to 494. It could go either way as we're just range bound, but give this the time it needs. My gut, however, tells me that 494 is a very probable target as long as we get back above 492. So this chart is favoring upside a little bit more, but just be careful because we are kind of consolidating simultaneously. Look for a little push tomorrow morning and then a lot of consolidation after that. For Apple, Apple is once again range bound. It actually saw a little bit of a dip right here, but I want to say that we're doing a good job at holding up. Apple may try to retest one uh, very, very important resistance area around that 231.5 area. We also have 232.39 as our next resistance. So 231.5 could be tested. And we'll see if you reject or not. But my gut is telling me there's going to be an attempt to push back up towards this resistance up here. So look for the attempt for 231.5 and we'll see what the move ends up being. Be very patient, guys, and we'll give this the time it needs. For a few more. We have Netflix, which is consolidating right now, but it's riding its 20 EMA nicely. If 750 fails, this we're looking for a dip all the way down towards 7, uh, 737 is likely coming. But I think that 750 is going to hold. And as long as we hold 750, we're looking for a rebound for 760 as our target up here. This is previous support becoming resistance. So I think 760 is going to be our next potential target. For CELH or Celsius, we're actually making lower highs right we're on a bit of a downtrend but this could be a flag that's forming so i'm going to be looking at this resistance right over here that's kind of forming off a trend line so if you draw it out like this you guys can see so i favor that what's going to most likely happen is we will attempt to push a little bit higher and then we'll be watching to see what the next move happens to be my gut tells me that celsius will be pushing higher for this resistance up here for 32.8 uh for a little bit above our 50 ema very close to it. and we'll see if we get a rejection off that or not i favor upside a little bit more so watch and see if we get to the 32 points for area and then we'll see what happens after that but that's gonna be one of the most likely moves so give it the time it needs for palantir we look a little bit more bullish right now as long as we don't lose basically 42.9 and 42 we are favoring upside we have this resistance up here around the 43.8 area to 44. So I favor upside right now. I think the odds favor 43.8 to 44 being tested. Then we'll see what happens as time goes on. Look for a little bit more upside on Palantir. And then we'll see what the next move happens to be. Uh, I think there's a good chance we try to push for that resistance. So give this more time. But as long as we don't lose, like I said, 42.8, we favor that upwards move. For Supermicro... We're attempting to rebound, but look at 46.5 to be tested tomorrow. If it manages to break this, I'm expecting 48 is coming. If it rejects off 46.5, we're looking for a dip back down. This chart is favoring that it wants to go up a little bit higher. So look for an attempt for 46.5, and we'll see if it breaks. Uh, it does look a little bit more bullish to me. I think 48 is a strong possibility. So we'll see if that ends up being the case. But I think 48 is likely coming looking at the 4-hour for Rivian. Rivian is trying to push. They actually tried to push a bit with Tesla, but wasn't really enough. We didn't get too much news as well that came out. Besides the fact that they um, basically have seen strong annual sales, uh, we're looking at their pickup that saw nice growth. I just want to say that we're looking at this key support at 10.38. If that fails us, we're looking for 10.28. As, as, as long as that holds, we're looking for basically 10.8 around that area as our target. So the four hour looks more bullish on Rivian. I think the odds are favoring upside all the way up towards the 10.8 area. Rivian looks bullish on the four hours, so give it the time it needs. And I think this favors more upside. For SoFi, we're on a strong uptrend right now. Um, if we end up losing basically 10.7, we're looking for a dip back down to 10.5. If it breaks 11, we're looking for basically 11.3, then 11.5 as our targets. My gut tells me that we're going to continue to respect this uptrend. Might be a small dip before it continues higher, but 11 is going to be a big fight. I think that this chart's looking more bullish. It looks like it wants to break towards 11.5. Look for a small dip and attempt to break 11. As long as we break, they're looking for 11.5. If not, look at the support below, but this still favors the upper direction. For the IWM, we're completely range bound right now. We have 220 and 221.36 uh, as our resistance areas, and we have 218 as our support. 
As you can see, we're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, but the four hour is still favoring upside for 222. So I favor a IWM pushing up towards that resistance around 221, and we'll see how things end up going from here. For AMD, we look a little bit more bullish. We have a nice looking, uh, basically like an inverse and shoulders like structure with this liquidity grab acting as an accumulation. If we lose 152, we're looking for a dump back down towards the 150.5 area. If we hold above 152, we're looking for a push back up for 155, and then 156.7 is going to be our next resistance. So I think that with this inverse and shoulders, the odds are favoring 155. I think there's a good chance we try to push up towards those levels. So give this the time it needs, and we'll see how things end up developing. For ARM, ARM basically has support around 138, and then we have resistance around 140, not to mention 142. I think that as long as we don't lose 140, this is going to be pushing back up for 142.7 or even higher than that. But the issue is we're just in the consolidation phase, so we have to give it some time to consolidate. But I'm hoping that we try to get a push back up for 142.8 before anything else. For um, Coinbase, we look more bullish right here. We had a low here at the 50 EMA. We came up. We're riding our EMAs very nicely. As long as 206.28 does not break, we're favoring a move back up to 212. If 206 fails us, we're looking for a move back down towards 200. My gut tells me this is favoring upside for 20, uh, basically the 212 area, so give this the time it needs. For Amazon, Amazon's doing a good job at holding up. As long as we don't lose 185, we're favoring a move back up to 187. And if 185 does fail us, we're looking for a move back down to 184. I think that Amazon's trying to get bought back up, so there might be a small dip that comes before an attempt to get up to 187, but for the most part, we're still range-bound. We're stuck between 187 and 184. Whichever way breaks will determine a much bigger move. So look for a small dip tomorrow morning than an attempt to get back up to 187. We'll see if we break it or not. If we don't break 187, then we could be coming back down and remaining in the range. So this is just a range on Amazon. Look for a dip and a bounce is the most likely case. I'll give it some more time. For Meta... Meta's on a bit of a downtrend right now. We have like a double top like structure. And we look a little bit bearish off a of head and shoulders, but simultaneously there is a nice divergence right here. If we were to lose 565, we're looking for a dip back down towards 560. As long as we break past 570, we're looking for a push back up towards 573. In my opinion, I think there might be a little rebound on Meta before potentially continuing lower. There's a large head and shoulders that's developing, but this might get a little bounce back up to 573 before potentially rejecting. So watch and see 568 if that holds. We're looking for 573 as our target. There might be a little rebound before anything else, and we'll see if we get a rejection as time goes on. But look for more upside is the most likely case. As far as Microsoft goes, we're making higher lows right here. As long as we don't lose 423, we're favoring a move back up towards 428. If we lose 423, we're looking for a dip. My gut tells me the 4-hour is going to try to hold above this support, above 423, so we're looking for 428 as our target. So look for more upside, and we'll see if we get a rejection or not. For Google, Google's in a very, very big consolidation phase right now. I think that with this little imbalance here, I think that this could lead to a push for 165.28 to 165.34 for tomorrow. Let's so look for more upside, and we'll see if we reject or not off that. So there's going to be a little bit of a push and a lot of consolidation. EJT pushed up very nicely, still holding up very well. We have this resistance to watch for at 36, and our main support is at 33. We might consolidate for some time before we make a bigger move. For the VIX, we have a double top. It's still consolidating in this phase. Will the VIX get a bounce or not? It could dip a little bit next to about the 18.6 area because the VIX does look a little bit more bearish, and that could favor that the market's going to try to push a little higher temporarily. For the 10-year treasury yield, it's not really affecting the markets, nor is the dollar. The dollar is starting to dip a bit. So the dollar is kind of like dipping the way the market was dipping, but now it's continuing to fall. This could help the market push a little bit higher because the dollar tends to be inversely correlated with the markets. So my gut feeling is that the market's going to see a lot of chop tomorrow, but some potential upside. SPY could retest uh, just under 581, then continue to trade in this range as the most likely move. But, but with whichever way we break, if we break the low of the day, we will dip lower. And if we break this high, we will push higher. I think we're going to try to pop a bit in the consolidate and we'll see if we get a break after that. With that being said, guys, do not forget one more detail. Tomorrow is going to be Friday. Fridays are oftentimes full of manipulation. So get ready for a potential push in the daytime and a lot of shop after that. I thank you all so much for listening. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll be back for another video tomorrow morning before the market opens. Until then, I really wish the best for everyone. I hope you guys do very, very well with your trades and etc. Have a good day, night, or evening, wherever you guys are around the world. 
and peace out.